Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the fifth episode of our Pokemon Platinum Random Car Challenge. After earning our sixth gym badge in Canal Lake City, we've made it to Lake Valor for our battle with Saturn. The Team Galactic Commander has a team of three and we'll be taking him on with the trio of Executor, Magmar, and Weezing. That's a pretty ideal team for this one, which is something of a miracle. That doesn't happen often. Let's have a look at the movesets. Up first, we've got Song the Executor at level 38, and he's equipped with Confusion, Hypnosis, Woodhammer, and Egg Bomb. Mugatu the Magmar is up second, also at 38, and his moveset's made up of Lava Plume, Confuse Ray, Fire Spin, and Fire Punch. Last up is Hiccup the Weezing, who's our ace at level 40. Explosion finally returns, which is very welcome, and it's accompanied by Smokescreen, Assurance, and Double Hit. There's almost no way we can lose this one, so let's get into it. The battle begins with Saturn's Golbat facing off against Executor. Before the Poison type can land an attack, Salm connects with Confusion, throwing her against the wall of the cave for one shot. For some reason, having seen a Psychic type move, Saturn sends out his Quad Weak Toxic Rope next. She does strike with a powerful Poison Jab before Executor can attack. It leaves him poisoned, but he counters with Confusion, which leaves another Pokemon slumped over by the cave wall. So, after just two moves, Saturn's down to one. The Galactic Commander sends out his Bronzor, and as he's almost dead to poison, we recall Salm and bring out Weezing. On switch in, Hiccup's hit by a weak Gyro Ball before he readies and strikes with Assurance. That's countered by a Rock Tomb that crashes down wide of the mark. As using the entire team is always my goal, we make another switch out to Magmar. Mugatu is blasted by a Shadow Ball when he enters the battle, but it barely leaves a mark. Summoning a Lava Plume, Magmar happily watches on while the fiery attack decimates Bronzor. That'll do it for Saturn, who's probably been one of the least challenging battles across four series of random car challenges. We head for the exit of the Valor Cavern and suddenly appear in Twinleaf Town, so while we're here, we may as well visit Lake Verity and battle Mars. Another Galactic Commander means we'll need another team of three. Against Mars, we'll be using the team of Execute? Are the other ones going to be Magmar and Coughing? No, okay, Sandshrew and Bayleaf. I like this team, but this will definitely be more difficult than last time. Execute is obviously a downgrade on Executor, and Mars has a Perugly instead of a Toxicroak, so no easy quad effective one shot here. Let's see what moves we'll be using anyway. Up first, we got Big Oof, the Execute, at level 38, and his moveset's made up of Confusion, Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, and Leech Seed. Next up, we've got Manola the Sandshrew, also at 38, and she's got Sand Tomb, Sand Attack, Rollout, and Slash. Not the best, but we'll try to make it work. Lastly, we've got Phil the Bayleaf at level 40, and he's equipped with Magical Leaf, Synthesis, Reflect, and Poison Powder. I'm not overly confident here, but let's give it a go. Mars starts things by sending out Golbat, and we get it going with Execute. After Golbat whiffs on Supersonic, Big Oof makes no mistake with Sleep Powder connecting to put the Poison Bat to sleep. We then get a bit lucky with a critical hit on Confusion, so we start with a one-shot once again. After Perugly wipes out Execute, she takes Bayleaf to his limit before Magical Leaf gives us back the lead. Bronzor ultimately casts Phil aside, leaving only Manola. A critical hit on Slash would have given us the win thanks to Iron Defense maxing out Bronzor's defense stat, but it wasn't to be. Gyro Ball hands Mars the victory, and this was as close as I could get. I knew there must be something I was missing, so looked through my TMs and realized I could have been using Shadow Claw on Sandshrew the entire time. My big problem in this battle was reaching Bronzor with just Manola, and then having to take it down with only not very effective moves. Let's try this again. The battle gets started with Golbat facing off against Execute again, but this time she opts for Toxic instead of Supersonic. Those were both fine choices. Either were preferable to a super effective air cutter. Anyway, Sleep Powder sends Golbat into a deep sleep, and from there, Big Oof has the simple task of two-shotting her with confusion. When Mars sends out Perugly, I call for Sleep Powder, but Fake Out forces a flinch. The ever-increasing poison damage leaves Execute weak, and a slash from the Fat Cat is more than enough to level up the match. We call on Bayleaf next, and this is a really interesting face-off. The two level 40s are extremely even, so just go back and forth with Slash and Magical Leaf. Phil's slower, so needs Perugly to avoid critical hits, and luckily she does. With only 7 HP remaining, Bayleaf scores the knockout with Magical Leaf, leaving us in a 2-on-1 against Bronzor. This is not the first time we've been here, though. After a not very effective Magical Leaf, Mars calls for Gyro Ball, and that's enough to tie the match up yet again. Sandshrew enters the battle and knowing that extra sensory can be dangerous, we start out with a sand attack. Bronzor goes for an iron defense and already we're in trouble. Shadow Claw does okay, but it's really not too impressive with the defense boost. Another iron defense makes things even harder, but at least we're not getting hit. After all the pain Bronzor has caused, Manola puts her roll into one more Shadow Claw. 
she lands a critical hit to burst through those defense boosts and finish off the world's ugliest plate. That was really tough. I had enough trouble just getting past Golbat with Execute, honestly. Air Cutter was an easy two shot, so it was pretty rare to get through that more or less unscathed. Anyway, having taken down two Galactic Commanders, we can jump ahead to Snowpoint City for the seventh Sinnoh Gym battle. Hopefully we have a slightly better team than last time because that was incredibly tough. Okay, Candice is the leader in Snowpoint City and she has a team of four, so that's how many cards we're gonna need. Against the Ice-type Gym Leader, we're gonna be using the team of Chatot, oh god, Skroopy, okay, Breloom, that's kind of alright, and Shroomish, oof. That's really not a pretty team to have for an Ice-type Gym. A flying type and two grass types. This really isn't going to be easy. Let's see if the movesets can inspire some confidence. Alright, Morel the Breloom's up first at level 42, and she's got the moves Mock Punch, Leech Seed, Force Palm, and Seed Bomb. Mock Punch may just be a saving grace here, because without it, I don't think we'd even have a chance against Sneasel. Elias the Skroopy's up next at level 40, and his moveset's made up of Bug Bite, Toxic Spikes, Bite, and Poison Fang. Also at level 40, we've got Crackers the Chatter, and he's equipped with Chatter, Sing, Roost, and Uproar. Last but, well, yeah, probably least, we've got Button the Shroomish. He's at level 44 and has a Fire-type hidden power, along with Leech Seed, Stun Spore, and Giga Drain. Okay, I'm really not confident here, but let's give it a try. Candice starts by sending out her Sneasel, and we kick things off with Breloom. We call for Mock Punch, which is essentially Fighting-type Quick Attack, so it lands before Sneasel can move, and as it's four times effective and Morel's attack stat is off the charts, it scores her the knockout. Candice sends out her Frost last second, and that's just no good for Morel. I want Chatot to come in here, but I really can't take a hit, so instead we send out Shroomish. Button plops down on the field just in time to take the blizzard that Frostlass was aiming at Breloom. It probably could have knocked him out five times over, but Candice will settle for once. We return the block of ice to his Pokeball and get our free switch into Crackers. We start by calling for Sing, another vital move in our arsenal, but it misses. Thankfully, Frostlass misses with Blizzard too, so that turn can just be forgotten. On the second attempt, Sing lands, and now we've got a chance. Crackers attacks with Chatter, and it falls just short of taking the Sleeping Ghost down to half health. Another chatter further weakens her, but after sleep eating a citrus berry, she's still fairly healthy. As Frostlass's snooze continues, Crackers uses chatter again, finally getting her into red health. That just means one thing though. Before chatter connects for a fourth time, Candice uses a hyper potion on Frostlass, so we're back to square one. After a fifth and final chatter leaves Frostlass in one shot range, she awakens attacking with Blizzard. This time it hits Crackers, and there's just no way in hell we're surviving that. Despite all our hard work, Candice has the lead. We go out to Skroopy and just cross our fingers that he can live through one attack. Frostlass goes for Psychic and even though it's super effective, Elias heroically tanks it. With just 8 hit points left, he bites Frostlass, knocking her out to level up the match. Candice calls on her Piloswine next and after a fairly weak bug bite, Stone Edge blows away Skroopy. That leaves us in a 1 on 2 with a Grass type against 2 Ice types. Should be fun. Breloom returns to battle and speedily strikes with Mock Punch and once again it's enough. Candice is left with only her Obama Snow, who enters the battle and summons Hail. That means Blizzard will land an inevitably one shot, so we can't really let her attack. Breloom cracks Obama Snow with Mock Punch and then watches on as she falls backwards, attempts to return to her feet, struggles to a knee, and then collapses face first into the Hail covered battlefield. A critical hit. Some way, somehow, we've taken down one of the toughest Ice type trainers out there with a Shroomish, a Chatot, a Skroopy, and one heroic Breloom. When I drew this team, I really just assumed this would be the first failed random car challenge. This actually didn't take too long though. I ran it through a few times to get the strategy down, and then on like the third attempt, we made it to a bomb of snow and got a critical hit that I'm fairly certain we needed. Anyway, after a few legendary performances in the Snowpoint Gym, it's time to return to Team Galactic Judy and battle Cyrus. Like its commanders, the Team Galactic Leader uses a team of three here, so that's how many cards we'll need to draw. Somehow I've lost the footage of my draw for this team, so you can just see my notes for what team we'll be using. As you can see scrolled there, the trio we'll have on hand for our second face-off with Cyrus is Togetic, Tauros, and Jigglypuff. An all-normal team. It's a fairly decent trio, but this should still be pretty difficult. Let's take a look at the movesets. Mylar the Jigglypuff's first in line at level 46, and his moves are Wake Up Slap, Rest, Gyro Ball, and Body Slam. Then we've got Tails the Tauros a couple of levels lower at 44, and he's got Takedown, Swagger, Rest, and Zen Headbutt. 
Lastly, we've got Jovia the Togatek, also at 44, and she knows Ancient Power, Yawn, Baton Pass, and Metronome. I shouldn't have gone for Metronome. I think I have a problem. There's no point addressing that now, though. Let's get into the battle. Cyrus sends out his Sneasel first, and we call on Jigglypuff. This whole episode feels like we're just repeating the same Pokemon over and over. The Galactic Boss shouts for an Ice Punch, so Sneasel darts in close to land the Frosty Hook, but Mylar takes advantage of the close proximity, countering with a Wake Up Slap. The crack echoes around the entire Galactic HQ as Sneasel thrown backwards, skidding to the feet of his trainer. Cyrus returns the unconscious ice type to his Pokeball and then throws out his second Pokemon, Crobat. Starting with Supersonic, Crobat confuses Jigglypuff, but he's unable to avoid a body slam that takes him out of the sky, pinning him against the battlefield. After an air cutter weakens him, Mylar snaps out of confusion, leaping into the air to attack with body slam again. Realizing that he's about to lose a second team member to Jigglypuff, Cyrus uses a full restore to try to regain the upper hand. Mylar manages to strike again before being pinned back by another air cutter. It leaves him on the cusp of fainting, but in another heroic showing, Mylar pulls out all the stops, scoring a critical hit on his final body slam. That leaves Cyrus with only one, so way to go Jigglypuff. Cyrus sends out Haunchcrow, and with his work done, Jigglypuff returns, giving Togetic a chance in the spotlight. A powerful drill pack blasts Jovia as soon as she enters the battle, and without a speed advantage, there's not much she can do. We call for Ancient Power, but she's hit by another drill pack, knocking her out before having any impact. That wasn't great. We send out Tauros next, and Intimidate will hopefully stop that drill pack from hitting so hard. Unlike Jovia, Tails is faster, so he's able to strike first with Takedown. It badly injures Haunchcrow, who's able to recover slightly with a Citrus Berry before landing a drill pack. Tauros isn't hindered though, charging down the bird once again and running straight through him. The takedown is a crit, which finishes the battle, giving us another win over Cyrus. That actually went pretty well in the end. Jigglypuff has terrible defense, so I wasn't expecting much, but he sort of kicked ass there. That's gonna do it for this one. We had some really tough battles there. We'll be continuing on with more Team Galactic battles next time, and hopefully making it to Volkner if all goes to plan. Until then though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.